Hi everyone, Kyle Demas here from Open Alex. It is March 6th, 2024, and I'm here to give a walkthrough of the new user interface showing a couple of the, the new features that we've just launched today. So from openalex.org, this looks pretty similar to what it has been previously, but we've made some significant enhancements to this search bar. So previously you could search some things like an author name or something that you wanna type in full text, but now you can search just about anything you'd want to in Open Alex. So the examples down here are Claudia Golden, and you'll see if I click on that, the suggestion here is an author profile, um, but also the ability to search that within full text. And as a reminder, you can hit enter at any time to just click and search whatever you've typed through full text. That's always a possibility. Um, but we also have coriander or cilantro here to show you that you can create custom search queries using Boolean operators or and and, and not, and those will get searched through full text. Really important here to remind you that you should be using all caps for those to work. So you can see or is in, in all caps. And then the last one, and this is new, we put institution here. When I click on that, you can see you can still search institution through full text. And you can still see like one of the sustainable development goals has um, institutions in it, peace, justice, and strong institutions. So that's coming up as well. But these top three are actually filters. So now you're able to type in one of the filters you know you can search in in Open Alex and then start doing searches just in that. So if I pick institution type as an example here, you'll see that it's fixed that to the left of the search bar. And now you're just searching within that filter. And these are the different types of institutions as an example. So we've made the search bar even more powerful. So hopefully you can get everything you need from just the front page. As an example here, I'm gonna do a Boolean search. So I'm gonna do whales, but um, I don't want any results on killer whales to come up because they're um, because I, I don't want to for the search. So let's say um, whales and not, and you'll see I put these in all caps and then killer. And then I'm just gonna hit enter. And this is searching through full text. And you can see it's applied at the top a filter that says full text includes whales and not killer. So if I were to remove this to change this up here and just say whales, the, the number of results will go up because right now it's 164,000 because that's excluding all the ones that say killer in it. So if I just hit enter, um, you'll see now it's gone up to 176,000. So that's how the Boolean operators work, really helpful. And you can see that I just clicked edit here and you can start editing live in that filter. So really did a lot of this work so that some of the people who are designing systematic reviews have more flexibility in their query design. And that's a big enhancement we're excited about. But you probably noticed when I hit enter and, and came into this page, the bottom half of the page looks very similar to how it used to. Over here on the left, we have all of the works. Um, and right now they were, they're sorted by relevance because I was using a full text search. If you're sorting by an author profile or something like that, um, it's going to sort by default by citations, but you can change that. So if I click year, it's now going to sort by the most recent publications that match those, those works. So that's still the same. You can still download the, the results here. We've made some changes to the download um, feature in the last few months. Now when you hit download, you get all of the metadata fields. Um, one of the things we're working on the back end is for you to have the ability to pick which metadata fields you export. That will be coming in a future version, so stay tuned for that. But right now you can download all the metadata fields in there for up to 100,000 works at a time. If you need more, the APIs are probably the best bet, but there's also the, the data snapshot if you want volumes of, of many millions of records. Then over on the right, we've got the summary stats or the, the results um, summarizing of, of this list. So you can see the breakdown by year for this killer or this whale search that I put. The, mo the common four that we have here now are year, open access, topic, and institution. I think work type is also down here. Yes, these are the default ones. You can change any of these. So by going to, to plus, you can add any that aren't in there. So let's say, for instance, I want to add author. Um, now it's going to, down towards the bottom, it's going to populate that author list in here as well and, and have the top authors. So you can add these. You can also remove them if you don't want to know the article type, for instance. Um, you are able to remove it just by clicking the X button, and you'll see it's no longer here. For any of these, you can click the dot, dot, dot to export a file that has the breakdown of, of whichever of these fields you're looking at. So if I clicked export here, it would um, download a file that has a CSV file that has year and the number of counts in that year for this search. That stays the same, but we also have the ability to download all of these at the same time. So let's say you have something that has 12 different summary stats that you're looking at, and maybe I can add 
Um, subfield is a new one that we've added recently, field, subfield, domain. So you can add several of these at the same time. Maybe I'll add sustainable development goal as well. Um, you can see it's, it's adding those. Once I've done that, if I hit this top right download button, it's going to download an Excel file that has all of these at the same file. So really helpful feature there. But largely, the, the bottom part of this is, is the same. We fixed some bugs with the, the counts of works, but this general idea of you have your results over here and you have um, the summary of those results on the right has stayed the same. There's one small difference. There's a lot of people who want to be able to look at just the works or the summary. And so one of the things we've added is this setting piece up here. And you'll see you could get rid of, for instance, the results view. Show me just the summary of statistics. And now you have something that's more of a traditional report that you could send to your institutional leaders. Or maybe you're doing a, um, a, a review and you're scanning through the works and you don't want to be able to see the stats. You just want to um, see the, the works. You're able to, to toggle on and off of there. And you'll see this is also where we've put the API query. Um, so if you do need it, it is still there, but a lot of folks don't necessarily want to be able to see that each time. But some of the other things that have changed, you might have noticed, is we have a few new icons up here. Um, I believe this share was here last time, but now for whatever you've designed, um, and even if you turn off the results page and you just show the, the stats like I had just shown, and you generate a QR code, it will go to that. So that's great. Or you can copy the link and share whatever you've designed with people that way. But we've also added this new sort of bell button, which is an alert. So let's say I create an alert. So let's make it a little more specific. Uh, right now I have full text has Wales. Let's do the university is British Columbia. Um, I'm located close to them and I know that they do some whale research. Um, and let's say maybe it's also collaboration with Fisheries and Oceans Canada. So you notice over the way that I did that, I could have added institution up here through the filters, but I went over to the, the summary by and, and found an institution that they collaborate with and clicked it. And the default there is to then create a new filter based on that. So now the search is any collaborative research on whales between the University of British Columbia and Fisheries and Oceans Canada, which is the federal department that does that type of work. So let's say I want an alert anytime this happens. I go up to this, this bell, I name this alert. So whales with DFO, oops, and UBC. You could add a, a, a longer description there. And you'll see at the bottom, you can either save this search so that you can open it when you're in here, or you can receive alerts from it. So I, uh, I'm creating this, I'm receiving alerts. So now my email is going to get an email when there's new updates from that. The only way we were able to implement this feature is by creating a new login for users. You still don't have to log into OpenAlex to use it. You'll still don't have to pay. All of that is still open. But if you want some of these features to, to save things to your profile, you do need to be able to create a login. So I've already created mine. You'll see when I click on this person at the top right, it says Kyle Demas, and it's got my email address. Um, you can log out. It also logs all your saved searches. But you need to be able to do that so that you can um, receive these, these email alerts and save searches. OK, so I've saved a few searches. And I want to show one of them because it's a great example of some of the other functionality we've built into the user interface. Because you might notice this top part looks a little bit different than it has historically. And let me show you why. So when I click on this at the top, Wales with DFO and UBC is what I named this search. But you can see I can make a copy of it. I can save. I can rename it. I can remove the alert here. I can delete it. All sorts of functionality there. I'm going to open one that I've already made. Um, I called it Demo Countries. I threw it together this morning. Um, you can see this top filter is um, is any of, so it has at least one author with any of these countries as an affiliation. And there's 27. I believe these are the European Union. I did this very quickly this morning um, to show an example. So at the top has at least one country from the EU. And then this second filter, I said, and has any one of these countries as an author. So the, the use case here is you have a group of authors or institutions or countries, and you want to see all the collaborations between any of the people in them. So uh, has anyone, so show me all the publications where there's an author from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, or the UK, and an author from any of the European Union countries. So this is a complexity that took some time to build in, but we're really excited it's there for, for the advanced users who need to be able to do that now. But you'll see the way that you do that is by having the same filter, 
on two different rows. These are combined with and, one and two, and that's the default here. You can't change that. But you can add or within the same line. So if I wanted to add a new country um, within this group, I'm just going to hit the plus sign over here. Give that a second to load, and maybe I'll pick um, maybe I'll pick Brazil just as an example. You'll see it's adding Brazil here to this list as or. I'm not going to save over this, but but do know that you do have to save once you make changes if you want them to be saved. It doesn't auto save because we didn't want it um, messing with people's saved searches. So we're really excited about that functionality. It's going to be great for some users. Um, we know now that, that people are building very complex filters and queries in here. And so we've added a couple other things to help as well that are a little bit more minor. At any point, you can hide the filters that you've built so that you can just focus on the works because we've seen people who have some very long um, filter queries in here. And we've also added the ability, you can see you can now X out of any row, or you can delete all filters and start fresh with the trash button. So this is meant to make it a little more simple. We also heard from users that it's great that we have so many filters you can search in, but it's complicated to find them sometimes. And the way that we've done this now is you can still search in this magic search bar. So if I wanted to know like, oh, I want to search the sustainable development goals, you'll see you can still search within that filter and it's going to bring up all of them. So I could do that from here, which is great. Um, or I could go and add a filter this way by clicking more. This dialog box is new. And it has all of the filters you're able to search in. And you'll see there's 40 of them right now. And now they're listed alphabetically going across. So author, authors count citations. So you can scroll through them, see them all, but you can also find more specifically the one you're looking for. But again, you're also able to sort of type them up here. So this is a lot of the major new functionality, but there's one more piece I want to show you before signing off. For any of the entities that you search, I'm going to search my name, for instance. So you'll see Kyle Demas, you can... Um, Search Kyle Demas in full text. You can see there's two author profiles here uh, for me. And then there's two options here. So if I click this and you'll see the hint we've changed, it used to be the number of, of works that are published with whatever you're searching. And now it's a little bit more information about that author. So you can see I was an author at University of British Columbia. I'm no longer associated with them, but I did my PhD there. So a lot of my work was, was written there. Um, I can click on this to find all of my works. That's the same, but there's one more difference here. Um, I could click on this to get to the author profile, but you can also get that directly from the search bar now. So if I go back to Kyle Demas and you click this I button, this is gonna bring up these new entity profiles. And this is new this launch. So we, we told people that these were coming, but now for all the entities, we've built the first version of a profile for them. So you can see Kyle, Kyle W. Demas, my alternate names, Kyle Demas, Kyle W. Demas, the institution, Works count. If I click this, it will show all of my works. It's the same as going up here to click view all works. Some key statistics. And then my top works. So this is the type of thing that we're starting to build in. In the future, there's going to be a see a problem. Here's how you report it for this profile. Um, and that's going to be really important for author profile curation. But for now, we're really excited to have that in there. But I did want to just show you that um, it's not just authors. We're doing this for all of our API endpoints. So topics are a great example. These are new and we just released these features. This is the first time they've been in the user interface. So we're excited about that. But let's say we wanted to know about this topic, ecological dynamics of marine environments. That's what I published the most in. When I click on that, you'll see it, it's bringing it back because I had that filter of Kyle Demas. I'm gonna get rid of that for now and say, I just wanna know about that topic generally. So there's almost 69,000 publications or works on this topic. But if you click on that, you can get more information on the topic and see the topic profile. And we're really excited about this because the new topic structure has a hierarchy in it where you have the topics that are the most specific. There's, I think, 4,500. And then it goes up to subfield, field, and domain. But we've built all of that information into the topic profile so that you can start exploring that a bit more. So you'll see there's a description of this topic, um, related topics, and these are the siblings. So what that means is all of the topics that are in the subfield oceanography, you're able to look through those. So really excited about that functionality, but you can look all the way up through the, through the field and the domain. You can click on any of these to explore those more. You can see the top cited works in this domain to get an idea of what those works are about. Um, and, and just like always, you can see some of the, the high level breakdowns. So we're really excited for this type of thing. Um, 
maybe there's one more I'll show you before signing off, but we are building this out with all of our, our API endpoints, so stay tuned for more on that. But let's say I want to know Simon Fraser University. It's another university close to me. And you'll see a few suggestions pop up. Simon Fraser is the name of an author. There's also a publisher. Uh, Simon Fraser is a, is a funder. But I'm going to click this I to get the author profile. And you'll see we've got that same idea where we have some of the key stats over here on the right. The top works. You can view them all if you want. Um, but we also have the child institutions and related institutions that are coming from ROAR. And you'll see here there's a, a ROAR field so that you can click on this and view your profile. If you've never used OpenAlex before, this is your first time and you're looking at your profile, we get all of our institution metadata from ROAR. So if you're looking at your institution and something's missing from the child institutions or the related institutions, click on the ROAR link to look at your profile. At the bottom of the page, you'll be able to submit curation requests. And it's, when you make changes in ROAR, it gets populated in, in OpenAlex. So um, please do feel free to go through and, and, and start making some of those suggestions. But you can also really quickly see Simon Fraser University's top topics, for instance. And I used to work there, so I know a lot of the researchers. And I would say, when I see these topics, I know exactly who the researchers are who are contributing to that in the centers. So this is, um, we're really excited about these new topics. So please do take a look. That's all I have for now. Um, we're going to get into a cadence of releasing new versions of the user interface every few weeks, maybe between two and four weeks, there'll be something new. It won't always be as big as this time. Um, sometimes it will be little fixes and sometimes it'll be little features while we work on the background on some of the bigger features or features that we're hearing folks want. Please do, in the meantime, send us feedback on what you'd love to see, what's working well, what isn't. Um, we really appreciate it and we rely on users to continue to develop this. So thank you very much. Have a great day and um, keep using OpenAlex.